Kenny Goodman here and welcome to the webinar. It gives me great pleasure today to welcome Ben Stickland, who is one of the main shareholders and backers of the famous Noble Samurai Group, who obviously built Market Samurai. And he also owns a company called Alliance Software. So a very busy guy indeed. So, I, you know, I'm really happy that you've taken the time out today, Ben, to come here and and talk to us about influence and in particular one of the main factors of influence and obviously the new tool that you've built that can help people implement this amazing factor of influence to massively increase their conversion so I'm really looking forward to this so hello Ben how are you mate Kenny I'm doing great it's uh, it's good to have an evening here and a morning there yeah, it sure is. I've just had my uh, breakfast and I'm sure you're around your dinner time. So let's start off with the first question for you. You've obviously brought out this new tool, this Scarcity Samurai, as part of the suite of tools of, of Noble Samurai, obviously Market Samurai being the biggest tool so far. What brought this about? Well, it actually goes back to the, 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 the underlying reason was well, there's two things. One, we, we'd had a lot of success with software that was that was quite similar, and, and we had made a major shift to move all of our technology into the WordPress platform, and we'd had a lot of other bits and pieces we'd built, and, and we'd been using a, a funnel technique that essentially is now the Scarcity Samurai software, and been doing it really successfully for, for a number of years, and, and um, I mean, I'm talking to the tune of millions of dollars of additional revenue compared to when it, you know, when, when we've taken it out, and, and so, what what we thought we'd do was um, look if we're going to go through the effort of rebuilding our technology inside the WordPress environment, why not go that extra step and you know and and convert it into a tool that we can then sell to to the general public. So and and you know as you'll see when we we have a look at it in our case we use it as a full um, internet uh, launch seat launch system that that does a whole end to end launch sequence, but. You can do you can do that certainly, but you can also do just just simpler stuff as well. So that but that was really the, the reason for it. We, we we needed it for ourselves, and, and I think for those out there ever thinking about building software, the best software to build is actually the software you really want yourself because you're you're the most critical of your own products because you're going to have to use them every day. Yeah, absolutely. And when you use the word funnel, just for those people watching that don't understand that terminology, can you just explain that? Sure. So um, uh, the Often you'll 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 see a funnel drawn as a physical funnel where you've got prospects at the top, and then you might have people that um, that come in and and you know they they join your list by you know taking up a free offer of some content or software, and and in the case of Market Samurai, we offer a free trial, and so people um, get into our funnel that way, but they haven't purchased at that time, and and so when, when you've got prospects in your funnel, you want to you know you, you want to serve them really well, and 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 so you know, give them lots of good content, and 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 show them, you know, prove to them the value of your offering, and then um, a percentage of those will become your customers, and and a percentage of your customers will go on to do other, you know, bigger and better things with you, and and so that obviously there's an attrition as people go through that process, but the the, the, the a funnel is is taking somebody from you know really only just their first exposure through to a lifelong customer, and. And, and you know, as marketers, what we want to do is actually optimize our funnel. We want it to get better and better because you know, the better our funnel does, then you know, the, the, the more money we make, and and all of our all of our traffic generating activities become more valuable. Yeah, and that's where influence comes in. So if you could just you know go through your presentation here and and show us how influence affects conversion, that'd be great. Sure, sure. So you asked the question a moment ago, why a conversion tool, and and you know, um, aside from it being something that we really needed ourselves, and, and we'd ha we'd absolutely proven ourselves in terms of our own you know a number of years in business, the 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 the, the power of working on conversion uh, is you, you it's like giving yourself a, a free pay rise. Um, you know, I've we, we work in, in our own business and with a lot of other business owners, and you know I, I've seen multiple occasions where you know a, a person will be working on their business and, and they'll be going out and doing a whole bunch of things that essentially are aimed at are marketing activities aimed to drive people to their website. And you know, we, we get involved and you know, we might help them with, with a range of things, but you'll go and do some work on their funnel and, and often quite small and quite modest changes will see a significant you know, increase in the conversion rate of, of a website. You know, we, 
we had an experiment come in, I think it was about eight weeks ago, for a site that, that all we did was replace the, the main banners on the website with, with banners that were just, you know, had, a, had a stronger sales message on them and, and, and used some influence factors. Um, and, and I'll actually point out which ones they were as we go through. And, and, and that site, which is an e-commerce site, saw a, a, a conversion rate boost of over 100%. And, and so it's kind of like this, this you know, the, the two guys that run this business are out there you know, working hard every day and, you know, with, with often a small tweak, you can, you can make quite a significant difference. And, and, and my experience has been often you'll have three or four tests in a row that go nowhere and then you'll, you'll run a test and, and try something different to, you know, a different conversion uh, or influence factor and, and you'll see quite a, quite a significant increase in sales. And, and it's, it, you know, it, it's that sort of stuff that, that often gets me really excited because, Everything else you do is now is now just so much more effective. So you know, before we look at, at any of the sort of specifics, maybe it's worth just taking a few moments and and looking at some of the different techniques that you can use um, for, for influence. And and I should give credit here. There's there's a there's a book that is now pretty well known in the in the marketing space. And um, it, it's um, there's actually two. There's one called Influence, and there's one called Yes, I think it is, uh, by Robert Cialdini. And and I'd recommend. Um, Robert, any of Robert's um, uh, materials, and you can certainly get those at, those at Amazon. And and he had this this fascinating experience of over a five year period. He's actually an academic, and, and normally we as marketers and, and academics, you know, often walk in different worlds. But um, as an academic, he went and joined sales organisations and 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 religious cults and uh, and all sorts of different groups of people, and, and looked at the different ways that we as humans influence each other, and, and came up with. Kind of a, a subset of really common ways, and and so if we started to think about you know these different ways of influence and sort of applied them within our context, which is you know how do we influence people in a web environment? There's there's sort of a subset of core things that we can do, and and, and you know the, the the if we sort of think of it in, in sort of three categories, the, the the first category of influence, which I haven't noted down here, but I'll I'll say in general terms is is actually just the quality of your offer. Um, we're going to look at different ways that Assume you already have a high quality offer, and how can you sell it better? But you know the, the people buying your products aren't silly. In fact, they're you know they're, they're often very very intelligent and highly educated, and, and you know quite savvy in what they're they're buying. And so the, the first thing of, of having a site that converts well is actually making a high quality offer. The better the quality of the offer, the easier the rest of your marketing. And, and so so that's really important. And the, the the second piece, and this is not an influence factor, but it's just I just should state it because if you're looking at improving your website, it's, it's really important as well. And the second piece is just the whole area of friction. Um, you know, the, the more difficult it is to do business with you, the more people that will drop out of your sales funnel or will, will abandon your website. And so they're kind of the two givens. We, we assume that our website, the purchasing process is easy and, and clear and simple. And, and, and secondly, we assume we're actually making a good offer. But with those two in place, you know, you can still have a, you can still be in a very competitive marketplace. There are a lot of people out there selling high quality products, and it's com it's in a competitive marketplace, and their websites are well built and 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 easy to use. And so, if we assume that that's kind of the minimum starting ground, then these influence factors can be the difference in in con in conversion rates of not just you know five and ten percent, but as I said, we've seen a number of testing scenarios that you know that that. Showed a divergence of well over one hundred percent, and and you know that that kind of divergence is worth taking note of. Yeah, it is because because if you think about it, you know if, if that's your way of making you know your living, that could double your income, could double your turnover. It's more than that. Like we've seen some crazy things. I mean, you know, often people's fixed costs are, 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 are fixed. <laughs> that's what they are. They are fixed costs, and and you know you, you might be. You might have, say, a, you know, if you're just starting up a small business, you might have, say, a turnover of, say, you know, five thousand dollars in a month. But you might actually have fixed overhead costs of, of four thousand dollars in a month. And then, you know, if you go and double your conversion rate and move to ten thousand dollars, often what you'll find is that your actual underlying costs only increase by a very small margin. So you might go from a, a one thousand dollar profit to, you know, if your if your underlying costs only increase by a thousand dollars, you might find that your your, your actual gross profit goes from your, your profit goes from a thousand dollars a month to five thousand because your your costs are fixed and and in the internet marketing space I mean we see things like affiliate marketing where you know, affiliates will promote a, 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 a third party's offer and if your offer has a high conversion rate more and more affiliates will jump on board and want to promote it um, even things like paid advertising you now if you double your 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 
um, your conversion rate, you can actually bid a lot more if you're in the paid advertising space and, and, and people often look at paid advertising and say, well, how can they afford to do that? And either they're making a mistake by bidding too much or they've just got, you know, your competitors have a higher converting page than you. So, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, real genuine competitive advantage, a high converting offer a, or a high converting web page or sales funnel it is is genuinely a competitive advantage and, 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 and you know, it, it sort of really opens the whole world to you. So, you know, we, we go off on tangent a bit, but it, but it, it really is it really is important. It, so, just in terms of some of the ways, and, and maybe think of this as a little bit of a checklist of things that we see on a regular basis. Um, you know, just the first piece of, of taking risk out of the purchase. Uh, I mean, we, we're, we're, you know, selling a, a scarcity samurai as an offer, and, and essentially, you know, our offer is um, that we will give back people's money if for, if, if for any reason they, they don't like the product, they don't use it, they, it doesn't work on their website, any of those reasons. And, and the more that you do that, the more that you take out risk and you say, um, you know, look, this is a risk-free purchase, that is shown to be something that will, that will influence people and increase your conversion rate. And, and we've done an awful lot of marketing and, and I can only ever think of one case out of probably you know, hundreds of campaigns I've been involved in that it's actually that the, a, a, an unlimited guarantee has ever been disadvantageous to somebody and that was somebody who quite frankly was selling rubbish. Um, and if you're selling quality materials, you'll always do well off a, off a, you know, a risk reduction uh, type strategy. The second one that is, is really a, a common one and, and you know, we use it in, in as much of our marketing as we can it's just the notion of, of social proof. And so social proof is where you get other people to say good things about you. And, and you know, I can probably hear people's minds as they listen to this thinking to themselves, well, I don't believe those testimonials on websites and, and, and being skeptical. But, but the, even, even basic, and there's a lot more than you can do in social proof than a basic testimonial, but even basic testimonials uh, in, in many testing scenarios are shown to increase the conversion rate. And, you know, if you're looking at social proof, some of the things that people are doing now is, you know, they're actually hooking up their comment systems to things like Facebook and getting people to say things on the record on Facebook because that really, you know, that, that, you know if, if you see a website where people are making comments a, about a product but it's also being reflected back to Facebook, you know, you, you're pretty serious about the fact that you're, you're endorsing that product and, you know, you, you can make your, your social proof elements more believable by doing things like incre you know, including photographs and specific statements and, and videos and those sorts of things. But, but social proof can be a really um, I, I important and, and a, can certainly drive up your conversion rates and, and you'll see in, in, in our marketing we use a lot. I mean, is this something that you're, you're using in your marketing, Kenny? Yeah, it, I mean, it, for me personally as well as, as a customer, you know, I, I sometimes need a little bit of a prod to make a decision. Now, if I see that lots of other uh, people, especially if, if you've got something, you know, like a Facebook um, like button there and I see that some of my other friends have liked it um, people who I respect and I'm more likely to click the like button because I need that little bit of a prod and it works in, in, on so many levels social proof and yeah we use it within our marketing and it, it's it's a really good strong factor yeah and, and I think it's the thing I like about social proof, and, and um, you know obviously we're going to talk a bit more about scarcity today the, the thing that I like about social proof is I feel like social proof is the influence factor you can use just about everywhere. You know, you can, there's very little, there's, you know, the scarcity is incredibly powerful as we'll see, but it doesn't actually suit all applications, whereas I feel like the, the, the beauty of social proof is that, that it, you know, you really can use it everywhere. I mean, you know, if you think about the big places we buy stuff from, you know, um, uh, Amazon.com, they, they've got the whole review system in there. and even though people do game the reviews, I still believe them. I still look at them, and, and when I see hundreds of reviews for a book that is, you know, between four and five stars, that gives me a lot of confidence to go and buy the book. And and so, you know, it, it's it, it's kind of the it's 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 almost the universal influence factor for mine. The one that people don't think about as much is just the whole area of of likability. And so, likability is we we tend to like people like ourselves. So. You know, if you were selling a product and, you know, your typical customer was an Asian woman between 40 and 50, if that was who mostly bought your product, then I would have photos of Asian women between 40 and 50 and, and, and good-looking versions of those people because they're, they're, you know, our, our target audience is going to identify with them and they're going to 
feel comfortable. They're going to look. They're going to like. There's a strong sort of you know. Uh, liking element, and you can almost see a link here between this and sort of social proof. But um, you know, if, if you want to have the representations that that um, that match your market, a another one that that can work really well is just this whole area of authority endorsement. And, and so, you know, that can be from you know simple things like using celebrity endorsements. Um, you know, we we we're doing some work for a, another company in the software space, and they sell into the high end corporate space, and one of the things that we've been encouraging them to do is they've got companies like Apple and um, Shell Petroleum and some really big names that use their software. And we've been encouraging them to just get the rights to put their logos as customer logos on the bottom of all of their pages because it's a really big piece of kind of, it's an, it's an authority endorsement that's huge in, in that industry. It adds trust as well, doesn't it? Because it's coattailing on the back of on the back of all the marketing that those particular companies have done. It, it, that is exactly right. It, it, it's that whole, you know, you know, looking good by association. So yeah. looking at ways you can, you can factor this in. And, and uh, it, you know, we, we talked about testing a moment ago. And, and if, if people here have got websites that they haven't been testing on, um, you know, often it's those first few tests that I find that you can really get some big increases on. And, and I used to take the approach of, well, I'll just test anything. I'll throw anything in a page. And more and more what I'm getting to is actually thinking about these influence factors and saying, okay, let, let's look at social proof. I wonder what social proof can do for me. So what I'll do is I'll actually load up big on social proof. I'll do a test that's all about social proof or, or I'll do a test that's all about scarcity or all about authority endorsement. So you know, the, the, uh, in terms of your testing, it's good to think about these factors and sort of load up on them in a test and see whether in your market they, they really you know, make a difference. One that I really like and, you know, I mean, all of these factors, the reality is you can use them ethically or unethically. They're, they're, they're actually basic human psychology. They're, they're neither moral nor immoral. Um, the, uh, but, you know, that I, I happen to like is this whole notion of reciprocity. And, and reciprocity says that when I give you something, you will be more inclined to, to do something back for me. And, and often those things can be radically disproportionate. In terms of you know the, the gift that's given, and we see this in the internet space with what we call the free line. And the free line is websites are increasingly giving out more and more quality free information <coughs> in return for an opt-in or return for something else, in order to give people a sense that you know that, that they've been given something. And you know if we look at maybe a, a, a classic example, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but going back a few years, you know there were. Uh, in, in Australian airports, there used to be um, uh, people who were Hare Krishnas, which is a, a religious group, and they would come up to you and give you a flower, and then they would ask for a donation. And the reason they gave you the flower, even though that you're walking through an airport and you've got your arms full of luggage and the last thing you actually want is a daisy, even though you don't want the flower, <laughs> the, the, the notion that you've been given the flower and then they ask for a, for a small donation, people were much more likely to give a small donation. People that were logical people because if you've been given something, you feel like you should be given something, you should give something back. But you know, from an ethical perspective, if, if we want to do that, if we can front-end load our, our engagements with people with quality, they will actually be far more inclined to listen to our offers. I remember uh, reading in the book Yes by Robert Cialdini, and the good example he gave in that book was waiters and waitresses in restaurants giving yeah. sweets. Uh, rather than just putting sweets in a bowl, they would actually give a sweet and then they'd walk away and then actually go actually have another sweet and give them two sweets and they noticed that the increase in tips was was pretty massive <laughs> and you know it, it's funny because we all sit here and think well I'm you know I wouldn't do that or I wouldn't be influenced but they, these are kind of basic human psychological drivers and um, you know, yeah they, they, they really are pretty common so and as, and as you said before, you know, you can use them ethically or unethically. They're, they are neutral. Um, you know, obviously, we want people who are watching this to, to use it all totally ethically. And, and the other thing that I would encourage you is I have, since I've become really aware of these, it's like you actually make it, you, you are more informed and can make a decision of whether or not you want to engage. And so, you know, you, you, you'll see people who are, in, you know, selling something to you and you'll think, Ah, you're using reciprocity. Ah, now you're using social proof. Ah, that's an authority reference. And let's hit it with scarcity at the end. You know, and the the it's also nice to be aware of this just for your own you know your own consumption. Yeah. 
Um, the, the, the final one that um, obviously we've been leading up to is just the, this whole notion of scarcity and, and the, you know, the conversations that, that, that I've had with a number of um, really successful marketers is you know, if you had to pick between scarcity and any of the others, in fact, we'd say give me scarcity and you can have all the others. Uh, you know, mm. the, if you look at sites like eBay, I mean, talk about, talk about sales offers that are poorly written. I mean, the, yeah. you know, the, offers, the, the offers in eBay, are so, the descriptions are often quite damning and, and often not well written from a marketing perspective at all. But, you know, that they get a 40% conversion rate. 40% of the, um, the products that, any, that are put up on eBay, um, you know, sell. And, and I've got to tell you, as a website marketer, I'd love to have 40% of the people that come to yeah. my websites buy from me. It's wor worth pointing out as well here that, you know, you mentioned before, once you learn these techniques and, you know, I got the book Influence years ago. Dan Rain actually bought me the book for Christmas many yeah. years ago. And yeah. I've known about all of these techniques and scarcity is still the one that always still gets me. You know, whether it's, uh, whether it's the insurance company on the phone saying, listen, that, that price I've given you will only last for 24 hours. It still gets me. I'm still completely and utterly reeled in by it. You see, you see it all the time. You see it with sales. You see it with, um, you know, when, when you're online buying airline tickets, you know, you, it's like, you know, as soon as they put the clock on you, it's like I, I find myself saying, honey, honey, come on, we've got to make this decision. And it's like, you know, this is for a flight that's three months out. If I come back in 20 minutes, it's still going to be here. Um, yeah. You know, so, uh, and, and you know, we, we've had we've had conversations with with some really significant guys in the marketing space who you know are often part of promotions that lots of people are doing, and and they'll say to you, they'll say, you know, that the key for us is we're just the we we let all the market talk about it, but we send the offer four to eight hours before the thing closes, um, and and we 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 define that closing point, and often we're the people that that bring it to that, that bring customers to a point of decision, and. That's essentially what scarcity does. Scarcity makes people make a yes or no decision because often what people are actually, what they're saying to themselves, some people say no, some people say yes, but a lot of people say, I'll think about it later. And what scarcity actually does is it removes the I'll think about it later option. And yeah. it, it, it says to people, you actually need to make it, you can say no, but it's a, it's a, it's a yes or a no kind of It stops thing. people procrastinating. It gets them off the fence. So, um, so in terms of you know why we, we built a scarcity based conversion tool, well, partly in large part it was because we needed ourselves, but also because in our experience, the the application of scarcity with a little bit of technology behind you is something you can do really quite quickly. And, and you know, we'll we'll have a look at a demonstration in a moment where even though we're talking through the process, we'll actually apply scarcity to a web page you know in, in just a few minutes. So. Um, you know, it's something that you can do and you can test really quite quickly. And obviously, as people that make software, it's great if we can, um, you know, put products into the market that people with with a quite low amount of effort can can trial in their market. And and you know, we are consistently seeing you know, some some really high conversion rate improvements. So you know, if, if we were, if we were to sort of compare two two conversion heavyweights of social proof versus scarcity, as we said, the great thing about social proof is you can use it everywhere. Um, but you've got to actually go out and collect it. There's a lot of work to be done in that space. Um, in terms of scarcity, you can actually you can apply scarcity with with the plugin that we've built. You know, in in a matter of moments. So um, so that's that. And and uh, uh, in terms of the scarcity samurai story, as we sort of covered this already, we, it's basically something that we built for ourselves. And we would attribute. Uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to think of. Do the actual maths in our head. It would be it would be in excess of three million dollars of additional sales to the functionality that that we make available in, in Scarcity Samurai. So, in in terms of a few ways that you can use scarcity to boost conversion, we'll start with with the simple stuff, and then we'll go with I call it complex, and it's probably because you know more advanced users would use it, but it's actually also still you know really quite simple to do. Uh, the the first really simple strategy is just simply to say we're going to make an all customers, you know, uh, limited time offer. So what I mean by that is, run a sale of some form, 
And we see this all the time in, in the retail space where people will run seasonal sales for Easter or Christmas or they'll run a birthday sale or, or whatever it might be. And in terms of something that you can do if you've got a list, if you've got a site that sells stuff and you just simply want to put out an offer to your list, if you put out an offer to your list and, and make it a scarcity based offer that has a deadline to it, the, the conversion rate difference of that versus if you just put it out to your list as an email is will, will be significant. And, and the three things that you need to do in order to put one of these very basic time-based offers into the market is you're going to need to set a deadline, so say when this thing ends, you're going to need to make to visualize it. And, and the important thing, the, the reason you want to visualize it is so that people know, so that people are brought to that point of decision and then enforce the deadline. And the great thing about enforcing the deadline is, is if people miss out on something, the, the next time that you make an offer, they actually believe that you're going to turn it off. And so it's, it's, it's never a bad thing if some people that you're marketing to miss out on an offer because they procrastinated or what have you, because the, next, the, the second and the third time that you ever go to sell them something, they'll actually be far more respectful of, of the fact that you are actually making something right now. The, 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 second, the second strategy, and this is just something that um, you know, I've popped in here because it's, it's something that you can do with our tool in, in literally about 20 seconds, and, and that is what I call a landing page time delayed offer. A lot of what we, a lot of what we do is you know, we'll send people to a page that has a video that plays, and, uh, and that'll be about a piece of content. And, and you, you want to sell something, but you actually want to, you want to see people engage with the content first and make the sales offer available only towards the end of the offer so that people can get the value of the content first. And, and so one of the things that you can do with this, which is really just a, this is like 2% of its functionality, but you can set up these style of pages where the sales offer is then timed to appear later down the track. And, and that gives people time to, to look into the offer and then the visualization you know, becomes available. Uh, the the third one, and this is this is probably where it starts to get more sophisticated and moves out of the zone of kind of I suppose a a you know, or moves out of the zone of, of being just a standard you know, countdown timer, is looking at what we would call a perpetual launch system, and and in order to sort of describe this, I mean this is what we do in Market Samurai, but I'm just going to give you an example of a, of something that we, we did. So. This is a this is a, a, a the sequence of events that that often happens in a in a standard sales funnel. So you might have your your lead generation or your opt-in pages where you know you might be doing some content marketing, you might be doing some paid marketing, you might you know Facebook, whatever it is, and you're driving people to a page where you're essentially giving them an offer in return for their email address. And we'll look at an example where we did this in just a moment, but at the point where you've where you've uh, captured their email address, then what you're doing is you're rewarding them for giving that to you. So you're you know you're typically emailing them with some content over a period of time. So you know day one, day two, day three, you send them a series of emails and you say, hey, here's a great piece of content, and and you start to build some relationship and they start to you know, uh, like the fact that you're sending them quality information that's relevant to their particular point of interest. And then typically in this scenario, I mean, it doesn't have to end after just a few emails, but yeah, at some point in the process, you're going to want to sell them something, and so you're going to send them an email that goes to a sales page. Now, this is a very standard sales funnel. Um, the difference between what you know people in the industry would call a, a a standard sales funnel and what we would refer to as a perpetual launch system is something that the, a, a launch has a deadline, but a perpetual launch system is one that has a deadline, but it's actually based on when you get into the funnel. So if we look at a say an alternative version of this, let's say that, and this is something that we did, you, you might you might put a timer on the opt-in page. Now that's not appropriate for a whole bunch of markets, but certainly it is appropriate to as you're sending people emails based on when they signed up. And and one of the nice things about our software is that it integrates with a whole bunch of the the really popular autoresponder platforms that are out there. Is that you can send them a couple of emails and then. You know, based on a predetermined amount of time from when they when they signed up, you can actually be presenting the sales page to them, and that sales page can have a an expiry that's relevant to where they are in the cycle. So I sign up today. Let's say my cycle runs for seven days. In seven days from today, I'm going to receive the sales message with a countdown timer that that will expire and and will bring me to a point of decision. But similarly, if if a new prospect arrives in two weeks, then in three weeks from today, if it's a one week sales cycle they're going to see their message. And, and so that, that's 
that's what a modified sales cycle with some uh, with some scarcity put into it will do. And uh, you know, we we did this, and I'll, I'll show you some examples of how we did this. But we we took a a website in a market where everybody in the market that we spoke to was completely skeptical that scarcity would make any difference. And and the market we did it in was in the in the handcraft market in 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 a thing called embellishment patterns, which is these are, these are like uh, hand patterns that people make for sort of um, putting together craft items that, that that become collectibles or part of scrapbooks, things that they they use for for kids and for, for scrapbooking. And 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 if you talk to you know, this market is typically women between you know that, that can be as young as twenty five, but it's more likely to be sort of thirty five plus um, women. You talk to them and, and you say, well, you know, do you think you'd respond to a scarcity based offer? And and the overwhelming majority of people will say no. But, but but our results were quite different. Let, let me just let me let me and, and we were willing to throw in everything. We threw scarcity in it, it, every part in the process just to see what would happen. Um, on our squeeze page, we did something a little bit cheeky. We actually put a timer on our squeeze page. And again, I wouldn't do that in, in, in a lot of markets, but we did just to see. And then um, when it came to uh, the the offers that we put in on our sales page, the emails we simply mentioned scarcity. We said offer ends today, and then on the sales pages. We put a scarcity banner in on the sales page, and so what you can see is, you know, we got a forty percent increase up front, and we got a twenty-four, and then another twenty percent um, on two emails, and then an eighty percent. And uh, the, the these one thing I should note is these improvements actually they don't add together; they multiply. So it's not forty percent plus eighty percent; it's actually a forty percent improvement, and then that bigger of that bigger customer base, we then got a whole eighty percent improvement on that, and then on top of that, we got a whole twenty percent, and so they actually multiply together, and it, and uh, the cumulative increase when we applied scarcity through an in, entire sales funnel, and, and I'm almost hesitant to put the number forward because it seems it seems un, you know, it seems unrealistic, uh, but the, but it, it was we used Google's tracking for these numbers was a a four hundred and fifty percent increase. In the conversion rate across an entire funnel, and, and that's that's the that best. That's phenomenal, thing. isn't it? And, and, and it's incredible. And, and look, I mean, I, I want to set realistic expectations. A lot of the people that are using Scarcity Samurai and, and, and you know building out these funnels are reporting conversion increases between fifty and one hundred and fifty percent. They're sort of the numbers that are coming in regularly. Uh, but again, when we when we pulled the thing apart and just did it everywhere, that were, they were the numbers that we got. So. What I might do, Kenny, is just sort of walk through what we actually changed and just sort of show some some visualization of what we did. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, on the on the order page, we had a a, a buy button for our um, in little embellishment patterns, and we we put a countdown timer that was relevant to when they got in. So you know they I I think I can't remember the time frame. This might have been sort of a yeah, somewhere between a seven and a fourteen day sales cycle. But um, when we started presenting the sales page for uh, the for the full offer of these patents, and, and we'd previously given away a sequence of these patents for free, so people had had a chance to taste test them. Uh, the this was the, the 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 main visualization. This is the one that got us an eighty percent increase in, in in conversion by putting this countdown timer on. Uh, in terms of our emails, just to to sort of to, to point that out, um, all we did with our emails was we did a couple of things. We we but the, the primary thing was we tweaked our subject line to move it from. A, a you know uh, an offer to a, a to put some scarcity in there by saying hey this thing ends tomorrow so uh, and and the last one we did and as I said this is a little bit cheeky um, and and I wouldn't do it everywhere but we we were open to testing everything is on our opt-in page we actually put a count down timer and said to people you've got five minutes to opt in. And uh, again, I thought this would everyone would just go, you, know, you guys are silly and, and leave. But we actually saw a forty percent increase in the opt-in rate on that page. So, you know, if we, if we if we look at those results again, you know, they are that, that's a pretty good pay rise, um, and, and certainly enough to make a, to move paid advertising from loss making to profit making. That's the, that's the kind of turnaround we're talking about. Mate, I'll, I'll jump into um, into how we did it with Market Samurai. But any any sort of questions before we do? No, I think you've explained that really well. When you were at the funnel part here, I was thinking, mm, we need some visualization here, but you actually moved on to the actual overall uh, cumulative figure. Yeah, cool. All right, so, and, and for those of us, for those who know Market Samurai, we've been using a perpetual launch sequence since, since you know, just about day one. And so when people sign up, 
we say to them, you know, you've got this is a seven day trial period, and we make that really obvious to people. We, we, we note that in our emails. We start off with really high content emails, and then towards the end of that period, we send them a thing saying, hey, look, you know, your, your trial period's about to end. Would you like to, um, to, to take advantage of, of a price offer? And we, we make that really clear in terms of, of what that price offer is. And, uh, and you know, we, we've got an inline banner that, that but this, this year is actually an example of a header banner, but we've also got these inline banners where you can, you can make it available or make it visualize it in the middle of a page, which is often really appropriate if you're wanting people to read some copy first and then become aware of, of, of sort of, you know, what the, uh, what the offer is. So that, that's, that's how we've been doing Market Samurai and, and you know, the, not, not to put too fine a point on it, but, you know, the, the, the use of this approach has, has, you know, makes a difference in terms of the kind of car that I drive and the house that I live in. It's, it's, it's <laughs> so, um, the, although you'd all laugh, I drive a, uh, I drive a big seven-seater Volvo because um, I've got kids and I'm really into safety. You're a family man, aren't you? Yeah, I am a family man. But, so when I say that, people always laugh because they always think it's, it's, a, it's a big beast. Um, the, <laughs> what we should do, um, you know, we're, we're making some claims that this thing's really easy to use, but I'd love to get Alex on just for a minute and just walk through how you might go about setting up a couple of these offers of, uh, and actually just show the back end of the software and, and take it from there. So we, we got a couple of minutes to do that. Kenny, is that cool? Great, yeah. Awesome. All right. I'll just jump out of my presentation. Great. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing well tonight, Kenny. How about yourself? Yeah, good, thank you. So get this ball rolling. Uh, all right, so we're going to be doing a, a bit of a look at uh, how to add some scarcity elements to a simple uh, simple offer page. So as you can see, here we are on Kenny Goodman's bobbleheads, so the infinitely <laughs> bobblehead resource. So it, it's a fairly standard sort of sales page. You've got a, an example of what the product's going to be, um, you've got the details of your offer, and then you've got your buy button. So you know, it, it's what you might expect to see on any, uh, any page on the web. Um, Do you reckon it looks like him? I think we. It, there's a definite, a definite likeness going on there. <laughs> Come on, guys! You've added twenty years onto me there. <laughs> um, so now we're just going to. So this is a page on uh, on one of our WordPress sites. So now we're just going to run through uh, one of our wizards. So in Scarcity Samurai, we've uh, we've separated things out and we've got some workflows that you can run through. They're called wizards, and they just take you from. Uh, from not having a campaign to effectively being, being set up um, with a specific type of offer. So we'll come over here, um, and here we are in the back end. If you're not familiar with WordPress, um, Scarcity Samurai appears on this left-hand bar, um, and when you go into it, you get your list of wizards. So there's a few different wizards, and Ben's already taken you through uh, some of the different types. Today we're going to be looking at a single page evergreen scarcity campaign. So what that is, it's, uh, it's based around a single page, that offer page that we just saw. Um, and it is a campaign that every time a user um, comes to the page, it's going to be starting fresh. So there's no fixed date around it. Um, so you know, effectively, that's why we call it an evergreen campaign. So we'll start by just clicking create. All right. So first of all, we just get to uh, to pick a campaign name. So this is just something seen in the back end. It's something that you need uh, you need to sort of identify your own campaign. All right. So no user's ever going to see that. So that's fine. We'll click continue. Now we get a drop down of all the pages and posts on our site. So it's fairly simple. We've got Kenny Goodman's bobbleheads. We select the page, and that's all there is to it. We've got the option of creating a new page here. So if you're actually, if you want to create sort of a skeleton of a campaign, you can click create new page, and we'll just create a placeholder so you can create the elements of the campaign and put your content in later. So then we just click continue. Um, next up, we work out how long after a user visits the page should it expire. So we want to really drive this sale hard. So we'll say that after 15 seconds, um, after reaching the page, uh, in fact, we'll say 20 seconds after reaching the page, the, offers, the offer expires. Now the cool part, we get to tell, uh, tell what happens when the timer reaches zero. So you can opt to do nothing, but we want to, we want to make people feel kind of a, a sense of loss if they, uh, if they don't take advantage of the offer. So we've got the option to direct them to a URL of our choice, but you can also select a page on your WordPress site. So we're going to pick our Ono oh Offer Expired page. So at the end of the 20 seconds, after going to the um, going to the offer page, they will automatically be redirected to this expired page. Now I should note, in this case, we're actually just setting up a simple timer based on when you load the page. In 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 a more sophisticated example, you would actually set your timer based on when they'd opted into your autoresponder. So 
you know, and then carry that through on subsequent pages. So this is just a simple, on this page, based on when you arrived, we're going to set a timer. Um, and the other, well, the other alternative as well is, is you could have had, if you were driving all your traffic here just for a, an Easter sale, you could have, you know, you could have that ending on, on midnight at the end of your Easter period. So, but in this case, everything's being set relative to when you actually arrive at the page. All right. So, uh, so now we'll just uh, we'll click continue and we go through to the visualization of scarcity. Now, now, this is pretty much the key to scarcity. It's all well and good to have a timer um, occurring in the background, but if the user isn't aware that time is counting down, then there's no sense of urgency. So what we're going to be doing is creating a banner that goes on the page, that shows a timer, lets you put in some text, and just gives them in their face the, the knowledge that the time is rapidly expiring. So we've got a few options. We can either put in a header banner and a foot or a footer banner. You would have seen those uh, earlier in uh, what Ben was showing. You can opt to put in no banner if you, if you choose, depending on the nature of your page. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to put in an in-content banner. So when we, uh, when we click in content, it loads up a, uh, a miniature version of the edit page, um, uh, the edit page uh, sort of display in, uh, in WordPress. So as you can see, we've got Kenny Goodman's Bobbleheads page uh, loaded in here. We should call it Kenny Goodman's father's Bobbleheads because that's really what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this, this, is a, this is just the, the same as the normal editor for a page. So fully, you can do pretty much anything in here. So we'll chuck, uh, we're going to chuck in our, uh, our inline timer just in here. So we click Add Inline Banner, and there's a bunch of, uh, bunch of banners already loaded that, uh, that you can select. So we're going to pick, uh, pick this one here. If you, if you really like to, um, if you want to make... Uh, like there's a few preset banners that we've got, but everyone's site's different. Everyone's got a different theme. Everyone wants effectively something different. So what you can do is you can customize your banner. Brings you into this little editor. You can uh, you can change your text. You can uh, move your move, move your timers around and drag and drop stuff. But uh, we'll say that the one thing I want to change in this particular instance is I want a different color. I don't like red, so I'm going to make a nice uh, a nice blue timer. So change the color to blue, save, and it'll update all instances of that banner throughout my site. So now, whilst it's called a red banner, it's really a blue one. Uh, all right. Now we get to pick when we'd like our banner to appear. Now, as Ben mentioned earlier, sometimes you might want that banner to be there straight away, but occasionally you want people to actually engage with the content a bit first. So just to give an example of that, we're going to have the banner appear five seconds after the page loads. So people get a bit of a chance to, uh, to view the offer before scarcity uh, uh, gets in there. Um, now you've got the option, uh, you've got a couple of options as to what happens when the banner is clicked. So some people like to have a, the banner be sort of uh, interactable. But for now, we're just going to say, uh, say do nothing, so the banner won't be clickable. We click add, and here it is. So it appears as a, uh, as a placeholder image in here. Um, now it's, uh, it's a normal entity in the page, so we can align it in the center, which is what we want to do, because everything else in our page is aligned to the center. And this little placeholder, we can move it around, and it just gives us an idea of where, where things are going to be um, when the page is viewed properly. Um, and that is the last, uh, that's the last element that we need to, uh, need to add. So we just click Finish, and we're taken to this summary page. So if you're using one of the, uh, the more sophisticated wizards, you might have a list of different pages, like you might have your opt-in page, some content pages, and then an offer page at the end. But we're looking at one of the one of the, uh, the simpler ones, so we've just got the uh, the Kenny Goodman bobbleheads page. So if we head uh, head back over to uh, to the original page and reload it, as it loads, everything appears uh, appears as it was. But after a few seconds, all of a sudden you've got your timer. So it's automatically clear to me that in ten seconds this offer is gone. Uh, there, there is an immediate sense of urgency, and I don't know about you, but I am trying to find where the where the order now button is. And unfortunately, too late. The times run out, and the automatic <laughs> redirect takes effect, and that's it. The offer's gone. The bobbleheads have left the building, and uh, and that is um, that is scarcity added to uh, added to a campaign very quickly and easily. So that took us all of five minutes, and we were explaining every single option that could possibly be applied. If you, you know, once you've been through a couple of campaigns, yeah, you can, you'll be done in literally 30 seconds. And, and yeah. you know, it, as Alex has said, it, it is something you can drop in in a couple of minutes. But even if, the, even if this thing took you 20 minutes to, to work your way around, which it's not going to do, you know, for the, for the 
the payoff. Uh, yeah, for, 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 the, for the payoff in terms of increased conversion, if you're sitting there and saying, okay, well, I've got a web page that sells something or I've got a key action I want people to take, um, and, and there's the possibility that if I could introduce a scarcity element to that, uh, and it may be a, in com a complete sequence of events, or it may just be a single page or a sale, or you, know, you could run a deal of the day website out of these, out, out with this technology, you no know, problems. Um, you know, we, we are consistently seeing people say to us, "Hey, look, I put this thing on, and and uh, you know, some of them think it'd be great, some of them skeptical, but but getting reports back that saying, you know, look, I've got an eighty percent increase in conversion, or I've got fifty percent, or I've got one hundred and fifty percent, and and so uh, it, it really is something you can do with just a couple of minutes." Um, and uh, and see a pretty significant result. So uh, uh, I might I might just sort of jump back in and and Kenny, was there any questions on that before uh, before I sort of uh, before I rounded out? No, I thought it was very very smooth. I think even a non techie could handle that. Yeah, and, and we've 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 done quite a lot of uh, a lot of work to uh, to make that the case. Those wizards, the wizards were uh, a a long undertaking, but you know we we feel that they've they've achieved what we wanted. Uh, and you look at, I mean, one of the challenges we've got you know, as a software engineering company is we've made a major shift into the WordPress space, and, and you know, a lot of people are, are a little bit nervous when they buy a WordPress plugin because you know, there's a lot of um, you know, sort of flaky WordPress plugins that people out there are selling. Uh, in terms of engineering hours, I think when I, when I looked at it before today, this one was sitting somewhere between 2,200 and 2,300 hours of engineer's time to actually make it work, it actually does the full perpetual launch sequence, which is which is which is no mean feat. And we've we've done an awful lot of work since we've launched it. Um, you know, we've got you know with, with thousands of users now using it, we've got a whole bunch of different hosting environments we're now tested on. You know, we 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 working with a whole with with, uh, with six of the major autoresponders. Uh, we've we've worked with a whole bunch of the popular themes. So in terms of uh, you know, a WordPress plugin that, that has a, a good suite of, of, of interoperability that will work with a, with a range of other things. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's been pretty well tested in the, in the few months since launch and, and we've, we've, we've made, it, made sure it's compatible with a whole range of the really popular stuff. So. Yeah, well, we know you've got a very, very, very solid team there over in Melbourne and uh, if anyone's used Market Samurai, which is obviously one of your biggest products, they'll know you know how serious you take your software development but what we want to know is what you can do for our audience today with Scarcity Samurai. It looks brilliant, looks like a great product but we want a deal Ben, what can you do for us? So, so really I mean the, the offer around Scarcity, Scarcity Samurai is, is quite simple. We, we say to people if you think that Scarcity might be something that will work in your, in your marketing campaigns Get a hold of the software, put it in, and if you don't double your conversion rate, you can have your money back. So mm -hmm. it, it's really a, a, a no-brainer, and, and uh, you know, there, there's even you know, there's people out there that have got a 50 or an 80 percent increase in conversion, and obviously I haven't asked for their money back, but have decided that they just love the software and will wrap with that in terms of increase in sales. But our, our offer is, I mean, it, it's an it's an unrestricted money back guarantee. If if, if you've got if for any reason the software doesn't work for you, then you, you can get your money back. But you know, the, the, the challenge we give to people is. Go and try it once. Try it on one campaign and see if we're wrong, and that scarcity is not the single most the single most powerful influence factor that you can put into your marketing. So, so that that's 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 the offer. And in terms of uh, where you should you know how you should move forward on it, our regular price, the way that we price it is for one hundred ninety seven dollars, you can buy a license that is an unlimited site license. So you can actually uh, install it on as many of your websites as you like. Or for ninety-seven dollars, you can buy a, a single site license. The the offer that's available, uh, if people take advantage of, of, of buying it through the link that we'll put up in a moment, is that for ninety-seven dollars, you can actually get a hold of the unlimited site license. So for ninety-seven dollars, you can basically have the, the Scarcity Samurai plugin on as many of your sites as you like, and you can use it in all, in all the various ways that people use it, whether it's just be simple sales or whether it's used to optimize a complete WordPress. Funnel. Now, I need to be really clear: the software only works on WordPress. So, if your site is built in a different platform, then the, the the principles of scarcity you should absolutely be looking to use. But but don't buy the software. It is a WordPress-based plugin, and that is the, that is the platform that it works on. If you're getting any amount of traffic whatsoever, you should make your money back in in the first day. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and so you know, it, it's we, we we wanted to put something into the market. That was that was a, a no-brainer. That people could say, "Look, with five to ten minutes worth of work, I see a noticeable difference," and that's that, that's really what we've what we've strived to to come up with. So, 
if, if people are looking to get a hold of that special offer of, of $97 for the unlimited uh, edition. Just go to kenny.co forward slash scarcity. That's kenny.co forward slash scarcity. Folks, get a hold of it. And, uh, and if you think you, you know, if you're making offers in your marketplace, then uh, and you want to uh, really take a look at a way that can can drive up the conversion rates of that and, and, and put a put a lot more money in your pocket. Then uh, you know this is a plug in to certainly have a look at. That is cheap as chips, as far as I'm concerned. So I think that's a really good offer. And thanks for that offer. And I don't know how long <clears throat> I'm going to leave that link up there. Let's see what I did there, Ben. Yeah, a and, and hey, we've, we've, a bit of scarcity there. And, and, and I will say, obviously, you know, Kenny and, and, and we, we go back quite a long way, so we wanted to put up something that would be really compelling for your audience. So. Yeah, thank you very much, and thanks a lot for explaining this to us, because at, at the end of the day, it's something that is extremely affordable, very, very cheap, but it, it's, it can make such a big difference to your offer pages, such a massive difference to your offer pages. So. If you're watching this later and for whatever reason I have taken the link down, then just get over to scarcitysamurai.com and buy it there. But hopefully the link will still be up for you and you can get that very special offer. Ben, thank you very much for taking the time out to, to explain you know, some more influence strategies there. And, and by far the strongest influence strategy is scarcity. So thank you very much for coming along today, guys. Hey Kenny, it's our absolute pleasure and uh, yeah, thanks for uh, letting, us, letting us be a part of things. Ben and Alex from Scarcity Samurai there, part of the Noble Samurai group which obviously has the famous Market Samurai. So if you're interested in that offer, which I think is a no-brainer, get yourself over to kenny.co forward slash scarcity. I hope the link is still there when you watch it if you're watching this replay of the webinar. Thanks again for joining us. I'll speak to you very soon.